All right, guys, there I'd uh, throw this head together and uh, make a little vlog this morning, I guess. Getting ready to go downtown. I figured I'd get these uh, heads knocked out. Got to do a matrix run for uh, Andrea. So, uh, gonna assemble these. I'll show you how I do it. Uh, it's not the way to do it, I guess, however you like to do it. I take a little uh, lube and put on the stem there. And uh, lately I've just been taking a little bit of grease and patting it on the seat just in case the heads sit around on the shelf for a while. I don't get a rusty seat that way. You can do the seat of the valve or you can do the uh, seat of the head, whatever. Just a thin coat, you know, and not a whole lot. Just something to uh, give it a little protection. And then I go ahead and goop the stem up and uh, slide it on in there. These are going to get run right away, I do believe. I uh, got a couple people that are interested in this motor, so we should uh, get it running. I'm going to try to fire it up here. And I uh, don't know if I'll sell it complete or uh, just as a long block. Of course, anytime you add all the sheet metal and uh, carburetor and all that stuff to it, you know, it uh, adds to the cost of the shipping and to the motor. So obviously if you got all the parts and your stuff's good, the way you want to buy a motor is a long block. So uh, there we go, a little greasy there, wipe that greasy grease off. Now I'll take the head and turn it around here. And uh, I'm going to take the grease and uh, I'm going to put a little grease in the retainer keeper grooves there. That uh, let your locks hold on to the grooves a little easier. Volkswagens incorporate no valve stem seal, so we're uh, going to get us some springs here, measure all four of them, make sure they're the same height. And uh, here we go. Got the old uh, micrometer here. Don't let the tape scare you, still works good. This is the digital one. I have the old uh, analog there. It works all good also. Uh -huh. Okay, so we have one bad one there. Throw that back over there. We can throw a shim under that, but we don't want to use any shims on these. Now, a spring usually has an up and a down. The tighter coils at the bottom will be your uh, down. Mm-hmm. Tighter wind, spring goes down. The more open coils go to the top. You can believe how many uh, heads I pull apart with the springs upside down. Obviously, it doesn't really matter much. They run either way. All right, so we got our springs there. Here's our uh, spring compressor tool. There we go. These are a bone stock set of cylinder heads. They do have a little cleanup on them. But uh, they're going on our 1600 over here. No port work to say. Uh, no uh, big springs. This is the stock 1600. Bought another long block yesterday, so I have to uh, finish some pulling that apart and get those parts to the machine shop we can save. Crank was bad, so uh, we can get a crank out of the deal, but I think the rods will be good. Some of the hardware, of course. Had a good use out of piston cylinders also. And uh, all the sheet metal. So, uh, pretty good score case I thought might be good and it was bad. Uh, the motor spun the rear bearing. It seems to be a common problem now. The rear bearing failing because of the uh, 
I don't know why all of a sudden those are going bad. A little tappy tappy and this one's ready to go on the motor. So uh, yeah, we'll get that assembled later today when I get back to, from Motown. Here's our uh, crank. We'll go ahead and pull that apart real quick. I got you guys on the camera here. You guys wanted to see how to get these gears off and such. So I'll do a little uh, gear pulling vlogging video. So it's all uh, Aerosport put up a very interesting video this morning. I always like his videos. I need a punch, so uh, let's see here. I have something that I can uh, mm -hmm. you just go grab a punch, it'll probably be quicker. I was saying that uh, I was watching uh, Aerosport's video this morning and he did a ride around his property. What a nice place that is. And, uh, he was talking about prepping. Prepping. And, uh, I'm not a big prepper. Uh, I got kids. I do live with a couponer, so that's like living with a prepper, I guess. But, uh, I don't know, I choose to uh, think that a lot of it's the frame of mind you're in. And if uh, you're always pe prepping for disaster, sort of uh, skews your views. All those things aren't like uh, they've always been in this country. It's still probably the best place to live. A lot of nice places here, a lot of nice people. And uh, a lot of the things that we worry about a lot of times are not in our control. Uh, so, I say don't worry. Just live life and try to make the best of what you got in the situation that you're in. And uh, worry is, uh, will wear you out, you know? So anyway, let's pull these gears off. Try not to philosophize, philosophize, or whatever too much there. Anyway. Of course, when you buy this gear puller, they tell you never use an impact on it. But, uh, I don't like doing it by hand, so I use the impact. the uh, breaker as I reached over there and uh, grabbed the old lever to shut it off and it just shocked me real good good thing it wasn't a 110 compressor I'd still be over there hanging off of it anywho we'll turn that off because that's pretty loud I think we got enough air to do what we need to do I'm gonna pull these rods off next and uh, the crank is bad <laughs> So, uh, hopefully the rods are rebuildable. Uh, we can send those out. 
Those are uh, worn out. For sure. Always like to have some of those uh, hanging around, ready to go. Shame about this crank, it wasn't bad. <laughs> Somebody put the wrong flywheel on it. Put a uh, 180 millimeter six bolt flywheel on the back of it with no O-ring. And uh, this is an O-ring crank. And the flywheel came loose and uh, tore the dowel pins out of the back of the crank. So, uh, this crank's pretty much junk. I saw Silver Horse's video too, he put up of the uh, Pro Mod there. Pretty impressive pass. I didn't get to see that car run at the uh, South Carolina race, but uh, really nice car. And uh, hopefully I'll get to go to another race and uh, see that baby in action. But uh, breaking to the fives is quite the accomplishment, it's hard to do. Been 585, and you can hurt some parts going that fast. So I can tell you that right now. Once you get the motor happy, the tranny doesn't like it. But anyway, that's about my limit. Six O's, 590s. Uh, once you get faster than that, start getting into a whole different tax bracket with the transmissions and stuff. And, Crazy stuff. Got the drop seeds today. Anyway, there we go. We got uh, all the goodie out of that. That can go to the scrapper. We'll save that other keyway out of there. That stuff's sort of rare. So anytime you strip a Volkswagen, you know the hardware stuff is what's uh, valuable that's what people are losing all the time so uh if you can save that stuff save it and you can uh, put it on the samba or ebay it there's guys that's all they do is sell hardware and uh, there's a good market for that so anyway, that's it. That's that crank. We'll uh, throw that out, door stop it, scrap it, whatever. Next scrap run. Show you the uh, dowel pins there on it. That in the rear journal. That's from uh, probably when they put the flywheel on. I would imagine that they didn't uh, set the end play. And there you go. Once those come loose, it's uh, done. And uh, that one's done. So yeah, I'm gonna make that little uh, morning vlog 